All right, now we're going to look at all of the controls in the object library that will allow us to build user interfaces in Xcode for iOS apps. We're going to start with UI label. So we'll create a new Xcode project. We're going to use the single view application. We're going to call it Explore UI Label. We're going to click Next. We're going to click Create. And then the next thing we're going to do is change our window to the right size. Here I'm using a tool from the Mac App Store called Moom, M-O-O-M, to resize the window to match the size that we want. And here we are in Xcode. So as we did before, we're going to select the nib file. We're going to make the project navigator disappear. And now we're going to drag something from the object library here, a UI label, into the screen. We're going to put it right in the middle of the screen. We're going to make it width of the screen. And we're going to make it a little bit higher. So as we're going to do with every control here, we're going to start out by looking at the attribute inspector, which is what we got selected over here. Do a little bit of looking at the connections, the help, look at some of the methods, and then explore actually using this control in a simple app. So first, let's look at the attributes inspector. You can see that our label has the string label. We can say, this is my label. You can see how the text changes there. The text type can be plain or attributed. Attributed strings are going to be beyond the scope of this course. When you master everything that's in this course, you'll want to go back and look up NS attributed strings if you want to use those. What an attributed string is, is something that allows you to specify programmatically that you want to have a string that potentially has multiple fonts and multiple styles and multiple sizes all inside a single string. When you say attributed string, you still can't adjust the attributed string in any sort of textual way here inside the property. So we're just going to use plain for everything else throughout the rest of this course. And some controls like label and button allow attributed strings, and you can explore that more on your own. The next property we've got is color. You can specify that you want your label in a particular color, either by specifying a specific color, or you can actually edit the color if you double click here. You can bring up the colors inspector and adjust and set it to any color that you want. For now, we're going to go back and set it to the default color. Drop this down. And next up, you've got the font property. You can set that to be whatever font, style, and size that you want. Here, the default is 17 point system. We'll change it to custom. And it defaults to Helvetica. We'll set it to bold. And we'll make it 22 points big. You can see the kinds of things you can do. What we're going to do with the rest of this app here, we're going to set it back to system and set it back to 17. The alignment property allows you to left adjust, center adjust, or right adjust the text within the label. Unlike some other systems, UI labels on iOS can be multi-line. So we'll set it here to be four lines long. Now you don't see anything different because our text property does not have anything in it to make it go multiple lines. It's not large enough. But if we set it back, say, to left alignment and we put in some more text, There, now you can see the fact that we now have a longer label and it automatically wraps onto multiple lines. Now, you control the wrapping by using this line break property here. Move the library out of the way. The default is truncate tail. So for example, if we made this label shorter this way so the text would not fit inside the label, you can see he puts an ellipsis here at the bottom of the label. If we choose truncate head, it puts an ellipsis because it's a multiple line. It actually truncates the last line, but it puts the dot, dot, dot at the beginning of the line. You can also specify truncate middle and see how it put the dot, dot, dot in the middle of the last line. You can also specify you want character wrapping. And character wrapping means that it wraps on a character boundary. For example, here, our label says, this is my label is a good label, and it's split between G and O, as opposed to if you select word wrap, it automatically splits at the white space. All right, in fact, let's go back and make our label make more literal sense here. My label is a good label, and I want to see how it looks with multiple lines. There we go. All right. Finally, you can adjust how iOS displays the label when there's too much to fit. By default, it's a fixed font size, and you use those truncate features. You can also tell it to say a minimum font size. In his case, we've set a minimum font size of 9. If we click Tighten Letter Spacing, you can see how it shrinks it. And especially if we shrink it down, 
you see how the font size shrunk as we changed the size of the label in order to make all the text fit in the label. But it won't shrink it down any closer than 9. You can see that as we adjust the size of the label, how it automatically does the appropriate truncation. Finally, you can specify its shadow color. Let's make it bigger again so you can see that. By default, the shadow color is transparent. You could specify you wanted a shadow color, say, of a nice bright green. And if we make the size of this larger, you can see that it's inside there. You can also adjust the shadow offset. So if we adjust the shadow offset a little bit, you can see it's actually a separate rendering of the text in the shadow color behind the original text. All right, let's go back to the shadow default. And now let's take a look at the Connections Inspector. UI label is very simple. The only kind of thing you really have with the Connections Inspector is referencing outlets. And in a minute, we'll take a look at how we're going to use a referencing outlet because we're going to add a button to this app and change some of the properties of the label programmatically. But in order to figure out which properties we want to change, the best way to do is to look at the help. So we'll come over here. Remember, we have one of these things is the Quick Help Inspector. So we've got a label selected. We'll click Quick Help. And now you can see here's the basic description of a UI label, where it's defined. And we're going to click on this reference right here. And that's going to open up the organizer. And we'll shrink the size of the organizer to fit it completely on the screen here for our recording. We'll go back to UI label class reference. So that's a UI view. Remember, we talked about that as we were talking about windows and views. It conforms to a variety of protocols, mostly related to UI view. It lives inside UI kit. There's a whole description in a programming guide written by Apple called the Text, Web, and Editing Programming Guide for iOS. We're not going to get into that right now, but that's where you would go if you wanted to understand all about text all over your iOS apps. And here's some sample code. Every control has this overview. Obviously, for a UI label, it's fairly simple. Just this text right here. But the most important thing is tasks. So we can see what can we do to a UI label in code. In the documentation, Apple breaks up each of the tasks into sections. So for example, the first one is accessing the text attributes, and then changing the sizes, changing the highlight values, drawing shadows, and so forth. And you can see that there's a text property, an attributed text property, font property, text color property, and so forth. And for each one of these, because you can see these are blue, you can click on this and go take a look at the property definition. So now you can see that the text property of a label is of type NS string, and it describes what it is you can do with it. It also shows in which version of iOS this property became available, meaning if your app is intended to work on a prior version of iOS, you can't use that property. You can see here this was available in iOS 2.0, which means you can use this in any iOS app on any system. For example, text alignment, you're going to see that it's a particular NS text alignment enumeration. And in order to find out what that is, you can always click here and it will show you. Okay, here's how I decide left, center, right, justified, natural, and so forth. And if you get down into other areas of the help, you can always click here and go back to where you were. All right. If we go back here to tasks, you can see that for the main properties of UI label, there aren't any methods. There are drawing and positioning overrides. If you created a subclass of UI label and wanted to change how the text is drawn, you would have to override this draw text in rec method, in which case the system would call you when a label is supposed to get displayed and you would render your own text. Again, that's beyond the scope of what we're going to do in this course, but that's how you do that. All right, there aren't any static methods. There's no specific protocols or delegates for UI label. So let's close the organizer and go back and actually manipulate our UI label in code.